Hi all, another weekend stuck indoors. I thought it's a good chance for us to talk to one of the good guys of rugby league and a three-time premiership winner, if you don't mind. It is Peter Wynn. Welcome. Adam, thank you for the uh, kind introduction. Nice to see your face and I hope everything's well with your family in these tough times. Pete, I see uh, Peter Wynn's score is open for business there behind you. How have you been handling the pandemic? Yeah, mate, it's challenging times, Adam, to sum up with the one word. Mate, it's been tough, actually, with the, with the closing down of um, the rugby league and all the junior league being shut down. I mean, these, these days are normally our most exciting time of the year with the NRL being up and running, but it just hasn't happened with the junior league being closed down, all the junior sports. There's no kids around. It's just uh, catastrophic, to be honest. It's uh, unprecedented. I don't know how to sum it up other than, than to use those dramatic words. Well, you are Mr. Parramatta in all your first grade games, uh, 175 in total between 1979 and 1990. They were all with the blue and gold. You also played six games to New South Wales, three test matches for Australia. During your career, did you ever contemplate leaving Parra and playing for another club or was it purely just the blue and gold army? Yeah, mate, good question. You know, Adam, I, I mean, I came from the country and when I joined Parramatta, it was the old 13 import rule. So um, each of the of the 12 district clubs could only buy players from a different era, from from outside of the area. And um, as a kid growing up, I was a St. George supporter. My brother and I were kids up in Warris Creek when St. George used to dominate the competition. So I had an opportunity to sign with St. George back in 1978. But um, I met this bloke called Terry Fernley, and um, he told me he just signed Arthur Beetson. And I was so impressed with Terry. I knew the fact that Parramatta were a, you know, a team that had made the final since about 1975. It was an exciting club to come to. They had the opportunity to, to play alongside Nick Crone and, as I mentioned there before, Arthur Beetson. Yeah, so you know, I took it up, and uh, as I've been here ever since, 78 to, what's it, 2020. It's almost, what is it, 40 years or 42 years, long time. I'm going to ask you, Pete, to name your top five eels that you either played with or have seen in action. Of course, you've watched a lot of games featuring the blue and golds. And I don't want you to uh, be clouded by friendships and be worried about what they might say. I just want you to give it to me straight, starting with number five. Adam, that's very easy for you to say. I do see these blokes on a regular basis, all right? But anyway, I was just thinking about my first association with Parramatta. It was back in 1971. I came down to stay in the eastern suburbs and my billet took me out to watch Parramatta play. Uh, St. George in the minor semi-final of the Sydney Cricket Ground. And little did I know then that I'd be coming to Parramatta as a player later on the track. But looking back in that team, they'd like to Bob O'Reilly, Dennis Fitzgerald. They had an awesome side, Ken Thornett, Dick Thornett. So I saw all those guys play. Um, and then uh, in the modern day, I've watched the greats, which I call greats, Jared Haynes and the uh, Jamie Lyons. But for me to name you out the top five, I'd have to go back to my side back in the 80s. And we had some great players, you know. So you give me a tough job there, you know? Peter Sterling, how can I go past him? You know, he was awesome. He was a great halfback. And I had the good fortune of moving in with him when I came to Sydney. So we had a very close relationship over many years. And to play alongside him, see what a great player he turned into, is amazing. And he's a great halfback. Brett Kenny, I was very lucky to play alongside Brett Kenny as well. I uh, played with Brett in his first ever first grade game. And believe it or not, his first ever first grade game against Newtown. He did what he always did, scored two tries, right? And then three three grand finals around scoring two tries pretty well sums up how good that guy was. That you know, that was Mick Crone. Mick was a, a country boy like myself. Always admired Mick Crone. Like he was, I think he's the bloke that was the, uh, the stable rock in the back line. So he, he uh, did, helped develop so many great careers. Beside him was Steve Bell. How do I go past him? Uh, Eric Gray, all these sort of great players. Mick Crone, you know, he, was, he was a rock of the whole side. He was a senior member of the team back in 81. And, uh, you know, the Paramount owes so much to him. Yeah, Pete, I can see you getting swept away in all the excitement of reliving these glory days. So just to clarify, Sterling, number five. Brett Kenny, number four. Yeah, uh, right. The Crow, Mick and number three. Yep. So I'm down to Ray Price, number two now. Ray Price, OK, yep. I didn't really want to put a number in against anyone, but Price here, I think Price was the background of Paramount. He played every grand final that Paramount has appeared in, the 76, the 77, the 77 replay, the 81, the 82, the 83, the 84, and the 86. I mean, Ray Price was a dual international. Mate, he, he did everything the game had to offer. And being a forward, you know, it gives the backs so much glory, but 
the hard work was always done in the pause. And we missed Price in back. When he retired in 86, we certainly missed him in 87. We missed the semis, unfortunately. But if he'd played, I'm sure we would have made it again. And then I come to Eric Gross, the guru. Maybe the reason I've chosen him because um, I can't really compare him to any other winger that I've, seen, I've ever seen or played against. The guru was like a rubber band when he first hit the scene. Man. He could tackle from behind. He could palm. He could bump. He could do anything. So for me, if I had to pick someone out, that I thought was the greatest player that I played alongside. It's any of those blokes I mentioned, but you put the pressure on me here. So I think Eric Graves, he was dynamic. Yeah, like he mentioned, so Sterling, um, Steve Mortimer was a real competitor of his, but you're you, you're sort of saying, I've really pushed you today, and you're sort of saying the difference being Eric Grove had no peer as a winner. Well, I've got none. I, I think that you've summed it up. I mean, like Sterling was often compared to uh, Steve Mortimer, Brett Kenny, Wally Lewis, Mick Cronin, Steve Rogers, Ray Price, the great Ron Coote. I just cannot compare Eric Grove with any other winger that I've seen or played the game. That's how I sum him up. That's why I've come down to him, OK? Were you out there when he scored that uh, remarkable try in the 1983 uh, prelim final against Canterbury at the SCG? What a, what a try. I mean, how do you repeat something like that? He had blokes coming left, right. Everywhere, every direction, he just kept he just kept going, just palming, stepping, and, and scored the try with Steve Moore. I think it was wrapped around his ankles. So, yeah, an awesome try. We're all desperately hoping that we can get this footy season underway. What do you think of Parramatta's chances uh, of breaking that premiership drought if and uh, if and when the competition restarts? I thought we'd won the competition. We're on top of the cop at the moment, aren't we? Two out of two is not bad. Well, <laughs> Let's pull it off. We'll take it. <laughs> I know, I like the side this year. They had a great year last year. I mean, they knocked off the Broncos in that semi-final and they went down to Melbourne and unfortunately got toweled up there. But, you know, they've started the season off just how they finished last year. You know, they've got a big year for them. I just hope, can't wait to get back on track so we can yeah. see how they're going to go. Well, Pete, thanks so much for all the insights. Uh, hopefully we get the footy back on sooner rather than later and those jerseys behind you start uh, flying off the shelves. Hey, Adam, thanks for thinking of me. Yeah, mate, I'm very lucky bloke to play for the Eels. Great memories and uh, all those guys. I don't want to upset anyone. They're all my mates, OK? <laughs> <laughs> they certainly are. It's just between you and me, the top oh, five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> very great <laughs> champion. He tops the list. Uh, and, of course, thank you very much, uh, Pete. And, of course, you can, uh, if you're down Trimmage Streetway, drop into Peter Wynn's score, pick up a bargain. In the meantime, uh, thanks for watching Hibernation Heroes. Stay safe. See you next time. And, Adam, don't forget that. If you don't score here, you'll never score.